Well, listen, I think like it's a bit of a roller coaster. It's a bit of a lull. I can imagine the cinema, there's lots of popcorn going up in the can air. Can you imagine like, seeing it with an yeah. audience? Hi, welcome back to Boys on Film. My name is Phil Marriott. This is Sean Vickers. I'm not going to do a little dance. I think the dance went down quite well, actually, the last time I did a little dance. I was going to sum up the film just by some body movements. Having a massive shit, because it's so (laughs) scary. (laughs) <laughs> so yes uh, welcome back to boys on film we are uh, regularly posting content out for uh, film reviews film festival coverage interviews sean vickers is my delightful co-host i'm your host and we've got so many films in the bag with the bfi london film festival looming so if you like the sound of that make sure you hit the subscribe button give us a like at the end of the video as well today we're talking about fall which is a survival thriller film Uh, Written and directed by Scott Mann, written by Scott Mann and Jonathan Frank. So this cost $3 million to make, and I think they made $9 million at the box office already. It's done really well. Yeah, I mean, it's not got a massive cast, has it? There's probably, what, 8 to 10? I suppose there's a few people that aren't really in it throughout. It's mainly the two girls, isn't it? Uh, Grace Caroline Curry, who stars as Becky. She was in Shazam. We've got one of the stars of Halloween, 2018, uh, Virginia Gardner, who I thought looked a bit like Reese Witherspoon and Reese Without a Spoon. <laughs> so Reese Without a Spoon, exactly. <laughs> you cannot not think of Without a Spoon. Um, yeah, Becky and Hunter. Yes. Very American name. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Mason Gooding, who was one of the stars of Scream, the reboot. And Jeffrey D. Morgan, very happy to see Love his him. face turn up. He plays the father of Becky. Becky. So he's Becky's Becky's dad. He was in The Walking Dead and Grey's Anatomy. No, he's quite easy on the eye, isn't he? Yeah, I watched about nine seasons of Grey's Anatomy and then I realised it doesn't go anywhere. And then... <laughs> <laughs> A bit like our previous film that we saw, <laughs> It Snows in Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that. And then obviously my husband watches Walking Dead and I would almost say the same thing, which is that doesn't go anywhere either. So yeah, he's starting two massive blockbuster series that don't go anywhere. So Best Friends Becky and Hunter, they are adrenaline junkies. I've seen a lot of people posting about this film. I was really intrigued by it because it's one of those films that if you're um, somebody who's well afraid of heights, probably best to steer clear of this film. You have Becky and Hunter and you have Becky's husband John and they're all basically on this sheer rock face all that living the life and climbing and they're really effing high up and they're all harnessed to each other to try and keep them protected and this is no spoiler because it's a core of the story but John falls off this massive rock face which for me I it was an audible gasp and literally like I was like oh my because it's just so high everything's so high up in this film that it creates this tension all the time i was saying this to my husband while i watched it, i was like it's really captured this tension because i just think you're you you've got this weird vertigo sensation throughout watching it actually and i watched it at home but i was thinking in the cinema i bet it's a real whopper because i think it was filmed i it's an imax film isn't it so i think it's meant to be seen on the big screen but like you i was watching mine on you know my tv screen so you basically it cuts to becky a year later after john's you know tragically fallen off this rock face and then yeah he fast forwards a year and becky's like hit the booze hard she's deep in grief her dad her hot dad is really worried about her and Hunter, who's this adrenaline junkie, as you've mentioned, Phil, reappears after a year and he's like, right, your dad's called me, things aren't good, let's get this sorted. And she says, we're going to climb the B-67 TV tower that used to be the tallest structure in the United States. It is now still the fourth tallest structure in the United States. And it's a six-hour drive. And Hunter persuades Becky that they're going to go and do this big climb as a way of kind of reconnecting, scattering John's ashes yeah. and, you know, like getting her back on track. Which, you know, if I was thinking I'm <laughs> deep in grief, what I would want to do is to climb a 2,000 metre <laughs> In the raging sunshine. Because I was thinking <laughs> she's scattering the ashes. She's going to become ashes before too long. <laughs> but that you know, yeah, sun was bouncing down on them. I was thinking to myself, what if she opens those ashes and you'll just blow back in her <laughs> You've got a bottle of water between you. You've got your phones, which seem to be never-ending 
charged up. The, their phones were constantly on and they were using their phones for, for lights. I think you have to suspend disbelief with this film. I had sweaty palms when watching yeah. this. I mean, there's so many moments in it where I, was just, I had to keep stopping it and take a breather because it was, yeah, it was really, really effective. It's good for that. I mean, I generally, you know, we talk a lot about mood. They create a mood really good. Like the anxiety that they can create from this, which is basically two, two people on the top of a very tall tower, is incredible, I thought. So, yeah, I thought the cinematography was great. They clearly put some clever tricks in this. Oh, the no effects are amazing. Now. Yeah, really good. You know, there's obviously as an, under, uh, an undercurrent. There's a narrative, which I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to really guess what that narrative is is and was no. but i'm just gonna leave that there there's an emotional angle to this story isn't there i suppose you've got to have something like that because otherwise it's just two people almost at that situation in their life where they think oh, okay we're both gonna die what can we do and they've got to obviously ramp that up they've got to make it more interesting and i think they do to a certain extent some of the scenes i would say weren't that believable but i think overall i think the effects make it more believable because it's really well yeah. done but i think their behavior when they're up there at the very top and they're there and they're stranded there and and their behavior was quite carefree and i suppose that's to make it less morbid because i think if they weren't carefree and didn't have that sense of humor i think it would have been quite morose and it wasn't it's fast paced it keeps you right on the edge of your seat their character interaction is an interesting one because, as I say, there is an un- there is like an undercurrent. There's a story there which gives it, I, I guess, creates tension. You can't help but put yourself in their situation, just thinking, "WTF? Now what?" Like you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's it's uh, there's moments you know, and they tr- they try and do all sorts of clever things. It's funny you actually abbreviated the WTF because um, I think Lionsgate, the distributors of this film, had to ask for 30 <laughs> to be taken out and they had to yeah like say dub dub, dub those <laughs> and, and use obviously you know trickery with and stand-ins to actually change <laughs> to frick freak or uh, other yeah. words it was the only way lions get uh, could get it to be a pg-13 is to dub all the <laughs> out. didn't they spend something like four million on marketing for this film Maybe. so yeah i think that's had a real push it's like one of those films that I've seen the posters and I think they've done a really good push on it and I and I, I feel like it's got that opportunity to be that like underground hit that's through word of mouth that will grow and grow and grow and, and good luck to them you know because I think they've created something really fun here and at times very exhilarating. It is really exhilarating it really does its job well I think. Are, are you a fan of this kind of film though? I mean I love some of the old disaster movies especially from the 70s and 80s because they're kind of trashy but they I don't know you it's a bit like horror films I know you're not a horror fan but some some horror films people love because it makes you feel alive it, it gets the adrenaline rushing and, and I, yeah I think it's very similar with this film it, it, it is engaging it did it did keep me engaged me and my husband had a lot of like audible gasps and a lot of kind of going like <laughs> clutching <this>. pearls <laughs> going, oh, oh my gosh like it made you feel like, like you said like sweaty palms a bit uncomfortable yeah. in your seat we were like Frick, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Final verdict though, I'm, I think I'm gonna go for three. Three stars. Mm. I was mm. toying between three and four, but. That's where I'm at, but I know you don't yeah. let me have halves. I mean, probably we'll go for three and a half. We don't do halves though. So it can't be three and a half then, can it? Can't no, well, that's what I mean. That's where I'm sitting. It's a, it, it's a solid three, as you would say, Sean. Maybe, I think it's a solid three. I think, yeah, over time we might be like, oh, we just got caught up in a moment. And that's why we <laughs> thought it was like that. So I think, I think we know, with, with wisdom and with, you know, I could muster a three. I think I would have given it a four had their attitudes been a little bit more believable and not so carefree and ridiculous because there were moments oh, yeah. I was just like oh I was eye rolling it's like you wouldn't do that but then a lot of people wouldn't climb up a 2000 foot tower in yeah. the raging heat yeah yeah I think the premise was good I think the plot was kind of there I thought the cinematography was great I thought they cast it well yeah the script was a bit wonks and then there were some like fluffs like their phones seem to always be charged. That's what I mean. So, <laughs> so I kept thinking that, and I kept thinking about the sun as well. I kept thinking, I hope to God that you've put SPF on, because 
you really well, are going to die out there. <laughs> like, I think makeup should have been like, okay, you've been up a tower for in certain number of hours. I won't spoil. You'd be like a bloody beetroot. <laughs> there is a, a really good scene involving something flying as well. A couple oh, of things it. that were flying. They, that really freaked me out. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that really freaked me out because we were like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. no. Um, See, you should have filmed your reaction. I would have loved to have seen <laughs> that sat on the sofa like... Oh. That's like me watching Hollyoaks. I mean, it's nothing scary for me filming, you know. I'm always like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's full it's out in cinemas and I don't think there's any release date about DVD Blu-ray on digital so you've got to get to the cinemas if you want to see it and I, th- I think it's definitely something to recommend mm, I agree if you love that kind of thing agree. oh listen I think like it's a bit of a roller coaster. it's a bit of a lol I can imagine in the cinema there's lots of popcorn going up in the air can you imagine like, seeing it with an yeah. audience I would love to yeah see it again I, I would go just to get you know that participation thing those films don't come across come across so often like some people try and create those films and i think they've got something quite magical here because it genuinely you're like you have an audible gasp which is yeah. rare do you know what i mean yeah what's that film where all of those it's a horror film all those girls end up in that cave the descent the descent it had a bit oh. of the descent about yeah, it. yeah 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 totally yeah i love that film as well the second one pretty good as well i know somebody you know that the, was in you know the, the second end one. of the you know the end of the descent where the girl basically has gone mad yeah there was elements of it where I was like, oh, it really reminds me of The Descent, this film. Yeah, I don't think it's as hardcore as The Descent. Descent mm-hmm. was quite nerve-rattling, no. wasn't it? It's, I'm surprised you made it all the way through that, to be honest. If you're yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah, that was a long, long, long time ago when I watched that. And again, it's one of those things where I was like, I'd never, ever do that again. <laughs> yeah, the second one is really good. Maybe we could talk about that on another video. I'm making not sure. <laughs> Always good to see you, and thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll be back probably with LFI coverage. LFI? Yeah, we're we'll back with LFF pretty soon. It's happening. All the yeah. accreditations have happened. Now yeah, let's go. Where's that party? Where's the launch party? I know, right? I keep thinking of the parties. We need to do those. <laughs> Get some backstage yeah. footage. <laughs> yes. All right. Love See you everyone. next time. Ta-ra. Bye.